I'm Alexa and you're watching Urban Charts. My EP is called Dancing with the Devil, and it's a very personal project. Um, coming from dance specifically, dance is a very ambiguous kind of art form. Like I can allude to something in a dance piece, but you don't really know what I'm saying. You can get an idea and it's left to interpretation, but with music, because it's my words, it's very straight to the point. And this project was very um, near and dear to me because I shared an experience that a lot of people didn't know that um, I went through. Um, it's basically about being engulfed in a toxic relationship but not being a victim but also playing an active role in the situation. So I'm the type of person that I always have a clear vision. So I knew I was going to create an EP and I knew what I wanted the EP to be about. I knew I wanted to share this experience, but I didn't know how that was going to manifest. So um, my producer and I, Q Ivory, we basically create together. So I'll write, um, I'll write acapella and then I'll come to the studio and we'll create a track based on what I've written. Um, and the process for Dancing with the Devil was very informative because Every time I try to write a song that fit a mold or sounded like this kind of thing, it never worked. But every time I said, okay, you know what? What, exp what a specific experience, what moment do I want to encapsulate? And when I allowed myself to truly go there and relive those feelings, relive those experiences, that's when um, every song came to life. Dancing with the Devil, the title the single specifically. I was actually on the train when I wrote that song. And we had created, this is the first time we created a track without me writing in advance. And it had like this tropical, like Sade-esque feel, but there was like a, there was a pain and a heartbeat in there that I really wanted to um, encapsulate. And I was recalling a very specific situation that occurred. And basically, I just dove into those feelings in the middle of the train. And I'm sitting there trying to whisper in my voice memos the melody that's coming up. I'm like damn near having an emotional breakdown, but I'm trying not to let people see because you don't want no crazies to think that I'm vulnerable, but I'm having a moment. <laughs> um, and that was the inception of Dancing with the Devil. So as soon as I recorded the song, I knew what the visual had to be. I just had this image in my mind. And I worked with a director that I really admire, Cameron Busby, super dope, um, to create the vision. We had several meetings for a long period of time about what, what I was really trying to encapsulate. I wanted something that was, that was abstract, that was um, slow, something that you really had to take your time to digest, but something that fused movement in a way that wasn't just standard choreography. Um, and I casted or came upon Kevin Tate, which is, uh, he plays my male counterpart. So talented, such a phenomenal dancer and being. And we just got in the studio and, and choreographed organic movement. Will I Be Free is actually also interesting because we all think about life and think about our path and how we want to move forward and are these things going to hold us back. And I basically was just chilling at a friend's house, like I want to write a song that's outside of just the love, I'm always talking about love, 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 and I want to write about something different. And I was listening to When Doves Cry by Prince and Hold Your Head by Biggie. And I was like, I want to write something about my parents, something about my past. And I remember writing um, the first verse and then recording the melody in my voice memo and then feeling the need to continue. And I basically just freestyled <laughs> the pre-hook and the hook. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this could be something. Um, and it was interesting because that was so organic. It was the first time that I didn't try to contrive the process 
and forced it to be what I think it should be and I just allowed it to happen and ironically that's a song that resonates with most people. Tidal Wave, there's so much said in the song, it's so layered and so minute that it's like almost difficult to encapsulate. Grab it real slow, grab it real slow, show me how you move baby, I wanna see you out of control. I really wanted to create a sound, I didn't want to just like make songs, have somebody send me beats and I write to it and I become this thing, because I'm a very versatile person. I'm very, uh, I have an, uh, an eccentric taste in music, so I feel like I can create anything essentially, but I wanted this project to be about me and what my voice was and what my true, my truth is essentially. So I was like, I want to work with the same producer, I want to create a sound together and really, 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 really like, I don't know, nurture this process. really want people to allow themselves to take the time and dive into the project. So it's not the kind of project where you listen to while you're doing other things. I feel like it's the kind of project that you really have to be in a space where you can focus and allow yourself to even recall times where you felt like you were tackling certain demons and tackling certain situations and how you moved forward through that. Um, and if people can just connect with the music on a personal level then i'm satisfied <laughs> and also if people can can look at the music and look at me as an artist and understand me as an artist and not box me in then i also receive that energy My brand, my vision, my message is a very loaded question in my opinion. Um, and I think I didn't realize how important moving with purpose was till recently. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work digging into who I am and what I've come to understand is that I've come from misfortune, I've come from adversity, but that does not define me. And for many of us, we have certain energy and circumstances that surround us and the way we've been brought into the world, but that doesn't have to define us. And for me, everything about the legacy that I want to leave behind is to empower, literally to just empower people to create change in their lives and to not limit themselves and to not feel stuck by their circumstances, but to know that they can accomplish everything. And I trust and understand that the only way for me to, to relay that message is by doing it. Is <laughs> by living it, being the change, literally be the change that I want to see. My culture really influenced my relation to art. So compa and, and reggae and dance hall really, really, really like runs through me and and it lives in all that I create. I think even the music that I that I create has that underpinning of the Afro-Caribbean influence and that comes from the core of me subconsciously. It's not even I don't try to make that happen, it just does. a lot of energy and my father's Jamaican and my mother's Haitian 
So I grew up <laughs> with a lot of West Indian music in my home. And there's only videos of me and I'm like four years old and I'm in the middle of the house party doing like the crybaby on the floor. <laughs> like, doing it all. And I think I was always just looking for an opportunity to perform, whether that was me singing songs, putting on little shows with my cousins. Um, art, performing art is just a means of expression for me. So when I was younger, it was my most natural way of saying who I am, saying what I feel. I never really differentiated dance or music when I was younger because it was just an equal part of me. Um, but yeah, I was always, <laughs> always <laughs> full-time for a dance company and feeling like my voice is being heard I'm actualized but there still was a piece of me that wasn't being shared and I felt like I wasn't fully 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 like this is Alexia all of me and I was singing on the side I was writing cultivating and I really just had to make a decision to go full throttle for what I want to do and I basically didn't resign with my dance company and I made a decision to like take a leap of faith and just do music full time and see what happens. And um, the transition was, it was a transition <laughs> because I was so comfortable with um, dance. I've been doing it for 10 years and I knew the system. I knew how things worked. I knew how I needed to move in order to be successful. But with music, it was this land of ambiguity, this land of the unknown. And um, I basically just had to learn everything step by step and not be afraid of being a novice, not be afraid of being a student, and just own that fully. For me as an artist, I really want my art, my music, my movement, everything that I create to empower the consumer to elevate themselves and to know that we're all human, we all have different experiences, but our experiences don't define us. And our experiences only inform how we're going to progress. And I know that I will do that. I trust that I will do that. And I know that this journey is gonna be me holding true to this, holding true to my core and not allowing people to box me in and make me the archetype and make me another little pop star baby. Papa was a hustler, mama was a saint Not really, they just doing the same Getting lost in the brain I'm really passionate about um, women and, and building us up and relinquishing all the barriers that are placed upon us in society Spirituality I believe that the roots of anything that evolves, anything that is full, anything that is light comes from spirituality. And I wanna be a vessel of strong sense of self and a strong sense of self-love um, to encourage others to tap into their sense of spirituality and their higher power. Also just to, to go back to fulfilling their fullest self and not being limited. We all, have a, we all have a place, we have a space to occupy based on our perspective and I trust and know that my space is for the betterment of the people and I'm not willing to compromise my sense of integrity to just collect the check or to just have short term gratification. I'm really interested in building a long term legacy, a long term career, a long term existence and I've come to understand that that comes from holding true to who I am and not being, um, not shifting and not allowing others to, to shift me. And I also understand that that's, that's going to um, come with a journey. And because it's gonna, my, my journey and my process is so rooted in integrity and in being a, a voice of change, a voice of positivity, a voice of light, that there's going to be energy that's going to resist it and there's going to be energy that wants me to just 
fit into a mold and I'm going to stay true <laughs> to that. Because I'm a dancer, people automatically assume that musically I have to be Sierra. <laughs> like that's the only option. And the core of my being and my soul and my artistry is not just a mover that sings. I am the epitome of an artist. And for me, it's not about the medium. I just happen to have an affinity for music and dance. I have something to say. Like I'm not just trying to create music that's we're gonna party to only and we're gonna forget years later. I wanna create timeless music, music that leaves a lasting impression on people. I want people to, to think about feelings or memories and have memories associated with my music. So at Your Majesty asks, hey okay, Steven, what drives you to succeed? What keeps you motivated in the most difficult times? Ooh, you know, what drives me to succeed? I understand that I have to move my the legacy of my family forward. Um, and so my family came, they immigrated from the West Indies. They created a stable life here. They lived a very uh, normal nine to five. They weren't able to, to have a post-secondary education. And then my parents moved forward in that regard. I'm actually a first generation uh, college graduate. <laughs> so that was like, okay, a, a check. Um, so for me, what driving to succeed is always remembering that I have to build up those around me. And I can easily be like, oh my God, this negative thing is happening. I have this setback, something's going wrong. I'm unmotivated. But at the end of the day, there's so many people who don't know, may know it or not know it, that are counting on me in order to elevate. I always think of my siblings. I'm the oldest of seven. And there's an 11 year gap between uh, my next sibling. So they're all fairly young and I really, I really want to be able to attain success and the right resources so that when they are my age and when they're developing, they can have the world at the, the palm of their hand. Um, okay, next question from S. Prometa, aka Sharon. She's also a dancer that I work with. Um, the question is, what was the hardest part about transitioning from dancer to musician slash vocalist? For someone that is interested in doing the switch over, what would you recommend them do? Wow, this is a good question. Okay, good questions. The hardest part was with dance, your schedule is created for you. You join an ensemble, you take classes, you teach. It's like there's an archetype. But with music, you really dictate everything. <laughs> so I control my success with music. I control how much I'm gonna write, how long am I gonna write for, what what practices am I going to apply, how how often am I gonna record, how am I gonna be training and learning more about the skill as a musician, and that's that was the hardest part of the transition because I was so used to having a rule book, I was so used to having things laid out for me, but with music it's like especially with being like a recording artist, not with being like a classical classical musician. It's really all in my hands. You know what, I, I would say the most profound moment for me was when I just let go of control. I tried to find the similarities. I tried to find, okay, how can I take this archetype of a thing and merge it into this other thing? And I kept hitting like brick walls. 
And it was the moment that I let go and allowed myself to just be a student, to not look towards the outcome, to not be so rooted in the, in the product, but just really just be present in the moment. And that's when things started to work. So I would say if you're trying to transition from anything, it could be from dance to music, it could be from architecture to psychology, I don't know. <laughs> I'd say just let go and be present. From Model Nehemi, super fierce, super wonderful. She says, do you plan on conducting dance classes in the near future? You know, not necessarily. <laughs> um, <laughs> I definitely want to be an educator. Um, I don't know if that's me teaching dance classes in the studio, but I'm definitely interested in doing partnerships with companies to maybe teach a dance class to like ad execs or writers or people in the in different entertainment industries that aren't performers. I would definitely be interested in stuff like that. Um, but I know that I do want to create a center for performing arts, definitely in the long term. I may not necessarily be a, a resident educator, but I definitely want to create a facility that's geared towards building up the next generation of black and brown uh, artists.